San Francisco International, 6 a.m., super tired, have a really long day ahead of me, but excited because it's new bike day. Okay, so last week, Cannondale flew me out to Spain to check out their brand new Super 6 Evo 4, which is the newest iteration of their flagship performance road bike. I guess I'm considered cycling media. Look, I'm very privileged. Like I said, they flew me out to be part of this product launch. But to be perfectly clear, this is not an advertisement. They, they didn't pay for me to make this video. They have no creative control, no input on how I make this video. In fact, they're probably watching this at the same time as you guys are watching this. So I think it's my duty. I think it's my role as a bike racer myself to talk about how this thing actually feels out on the road, out in its environment, the place where it was meticulously engineered and designed to perform its best. And the good news is I had a chance to do that. I absolutely put this thing through its paces. But before we get out on the road, I wanted to talk about this trip really quick because it was crazy, guys. Like, landed in Girona, Spain. All right, <clears throat> made it here to the hotel. Um, the name of the game now is to not sleep until tonight because I'm severely jet lagged. I want to get over it real quick. Got some swag provided by our friends over at Cannondale. So fight the urge to sleep, have some dinner later, crash, big ride tomorrow, let's do it. Cannondale put on a presentation about the new lineup of bikes, the standout features, the new aerodynamic and weight saving claims and all, and all those things. And I do want to spend just a minute talking about the standout features and especially the price points. I think that's going to be a big topic of conversation. I want to get your guys' take. I have some some interesting thoughts about these new price points. And just like with most releases, there are several tiers to choose from. Let's start at the top, because to me, that's the most exciting. They have a $15,000 road bike, you guys. Like, what? <laughs> um, traditionally, like, around $13,000 is outrageously expensive by itself, and that is usually the top tier spec from a manufacturer. Cannondale is like, hold my beer, $15,000. What do you get for that $15,000? It is called Lab 71. It's basically the S-Works for Cannondale. It is their top tier flagship, no holds barred, like absolutely bonkers, boutique, integrated handlebar, full carbon, ships at the UCI weight limit, crazy road bike. And in Cannondale's defense, I think these bikes will sell. I think if you're the type of person who's like, I want the highest performing best road bike you can buy, this is it. I mean, I like they've just, I think it could be $20,000 and people would still buy it. But let's get back to reality for I think most people and talk about the lower tier bikes throughout this range. And the next tier down is their high mod. This is like the traditional high end road bike. This is still a third $13,500 bike. And incidentally, this is the bike I was on when we went out and rode. So um, I have a lot of thoughts on this. We're going to get into actually how it feels out on the road, like I said. But but this is your, your SRAM Red E-Tap, and it is no longer Lab 71. You're losing something like, oh, it's like 40 grams on the frame set. It's really, it's really not much at all, you guys. I think the biggest thing is it doesn't say Lab 71 on the frame, but a lot of the other technology trickles down. In fact, a lot of this technology trickles down even to the lower end specs, which is good news for you folks out there who are trying to save a buck. But let's talk about this high mod spec, the integration. That's one thing that is a standout feature that I wanna talk about. There's a right way to do cable integration and there's a wrong way to do cable integration. And Cannondale has done it the right way. There, There's a clever way they have the the cables going through the headset bearings instead of in front like before. Speaking of headset bearings, those are now a standard. So you can put this bike in a travel bag. You can make minor adjustments without having to cut and re-bleed the whole system. I don't know why every bike manufacturer hasn't figured this out. Thankfully, Cannondale got it right with the new Evo 4. So as you move down the spec, just like you would suspect, there is a lower tier group set eventually um, you lose their, their new wheel technology, and then you also don't get the high mod carbon anymore, so a bit of a weight penalty there. But honestly, guys, it's not, not all that much. Oh, one thing I totally forgot about. On the high-end specs, you have their new integrated bottle, which to me is like totally gimmicky, right? Like, <laughs> it's cool, and yeah, I think maybe it saves like a watt or two in the wind tunnel. They're oddly shaped. They're kind of hard to put in and take out. It's very novelty. It's very like spec sheet marketing stuff to me. Um, but ah, it's worth mentioning. It's a new thing, whatever. <laughs> they have to stand out somehow among everybody else, right? Because the frames themselves, you guys, all start looking the same. Is it just me? I feel like I'm in an episode of Twilight Zone or something. Like every bike these days is like, we have the standout aerodynamics and the standout lightweight features. And it's like, it looks identical to the other offerings from these other brands. Um, so I, don't, I didn't want to spend too much time. I think they have beautiful paint jobs. I'll give Cannondale that. But in terms of its aerodynamic and design capability, like, you know, drop seat stays, 
wide tire clearance up to 32s, maybe even 34s. Like this is just now the standard and Cannondale hasn't really set themselves ahead in that in that respect. Okay, but enough about specs. Like like I said, there was a million cycling media people there. Um, you can go watch their videos. Uh, I suggest you do. I met a bunch of these folks. They're super, super cool. There was It was really fun to spend time with them. You can also go straight to Cannondale's website. By the time you're listening to this, I'm sure all of the details about every spec is going to be available on their website. But now let's hit the road. Let's get into the GoPro, the NorCal Cycling Special, and let's figure out how this thing actually feels out on the road put to the test. Okay, so for, for this first little test, um, I wanted to see how the bike is going to perform under load in a seated effort. Um, at speed, I wanted to see how responsive it's going to be. I also just kind of wanted to go fast because this media ride started off pretty slow. We ended up having a lot of fun. You're going to see them in the next couple of clips. But um, I wanted to do this effort. I stayed seated. A lot of crit efforts. You come out of a corner, you want to stay seated, you want to stay arrow. So um, I just wanted to see if I could feel the bike flexing underneath me. I wanted to see if it could get up to speed quickly and then, and then more importantly, hold its speed. And to be honest, it felt great. There was, there was really nothing, no big surprises here. Um, but let's jump into the next one, which is, of course, the sprint. So already up at, up at some speed here, 26 miles an hour. And um, I, I just open it up here. I just wanted to see. I stand up. Um, I, I give her the beans. Um, not, the, not, not my biggest effort in the world, to about 1,250 watts. But uh, the point is here is I want to see if I can feel how the bike responds to this amount of torque, this amount of power. Because um, if, if we go back to, to previous years, there, there used to be a distinction between what is a climbing bike, what is an aero bike. And climbing bikes, there were sacrifices made. There, there's less material. That's, that's like quite simply how they made them lighter. So the sacrifice was you could feel that bottom bracket move underneath you under power. You could feel the handlebars, the stem, and you could feel all these things flexing under power. Aside from being a little bit unsettling, also... It's, uh, it's inefficient. You want every single watt of power that you're pushing into those pedals to be translated into the drivetrain and into moving you forward. And now that line between a climbing bike and an aero bike is kind of blurred. So how did this Super 6 Evo feel? Well, let's not forget it's a $13,000 bike, guys. But let's compare it to the previous bikes I've owned because I always regarded the Venge especially as being like the stiffest carbon road bike, almost to a fault. And the Tarmac SL7 that I rode last year is the same, another great race bike. I think that if I could run a test where I was doing blindfolded sprints, which um, sounds terrifying, I think I would be hard pressed to find the difference between all three of those bikes. They're top tier, top spec bikes that all feel really great under load. And now, especially with the SL7 and now the Super 6 Evo 4, you also get a very light package. So they've done a great job. It feels like a very capable sprint bike in the limited time I had it. but. That's not the full story, because like I said, the Venge was almost stiff to a fault. How does the bike feel comfort-wise? Would you want to go out and do a long road race on this bike? How does it carve corners? How can it descend? Those types of things. Let's find out. Okay, so the last thing we did, and this was super fun. We did the media ride, and then a, f a handful of us decided, hey, we want to do a little extra credit ride. We want to add a little bit more. So we climbed a big local famous climb in the Girona area, and uh, then we had a chance to descend. Now, here's the thing. I've never done this descent. Today's the first day I've ridden this bike. So with that being said, I would generally be pretty cautious um, with a brand new bike, brand new roads. But uh, look, I felt pretty darn confident. So I think that by itself already speaks volumes to how this bike feels, the confidence I had underneath me. We were, dude, we were jamming corners. This is, um, this is the, the Velo Guide that's in front of me. And I was just doing my best to keep up with him. It was no fault of the equipment. It was just like, yeah, I think I'm going to stop at about 80, 85% speed here. But um, we were well, we were moving. I don't know if the GoPro is going to capture this. But uh, this was fast. Um, this is pretty technical. I think we got up to close to 40 miles an hour in a couple of the straight sections. And like I said, this is a, this is a bike that is that is new to me. It's not like when I went from the Venge to the SL7 with um, the same geometry. This is a new bike. These are new roads. And I felt really confident in these corners. It felt like I was just carving these corners. I was always on the edge of my tires, but um, it really felt planted. Uh, it really felt like I had a lot of confidence going through these corners. And I would have no problem taking this bike at 38 miles an hour into the final corner of a criteria. So let's go back now and answer that original question. Is this bike worth that crazy price tag of $15,000? Probably not. <laughs> but look, who am I to judge? 
If it makes you happy, go for it. If it makes you ride more, if it makes you train more, do your thing. The, the top spec $15,000 Lab 71 is probably the fastest bike you can buy. But my suggestion, and Cannondale probably won't like me saying this, is go for that lowest tier model. It's 5,500 bucks. You get Ultegra Di2. You get their pretty clever implementation of, of cable integration. And let's not forget, it's the same mold, you guys. Like the, the frame, all the engineering, the design, all the hours they spent in the wind tunnel to perfect this design. It's the same on the lowest spec $5,500 bike. The main difference comes down to weight. Yes, there's an argument to be made that the new wheels are more aerodynamic. I don't think it's going to be a night and day. It mostly boils down to weight, and it's not even that much weight. I think it's it's two, maybe three pounds, something like that. So, look, if you're really chasing performance, Spring 4, the High Mod 2, comes with Ultegra Di2. You get the new wheels. You get the High Mod carbon layup. It's going to be a lighter package, potentially a slightly more aerodynamic package, and if nothing else, this pretty amazing colorway. But otherwise... Guys, the $5,500 bike is the best value proposition. I think Cannondale's have done a good job with this new bike. I think the new tier above high mod, they've defined, Cannondale has effectively defined a new tier of super bike is a bit ridiculous. But uh, hey, it's a work of art. It's pretty amazing. And um, if that floats your boat, go for it. So thanks for watching, guys. And thanks again to Cannondale for making this trip possible, having me out. And as always, catch you guys in the next one.